Okay, we are at section uh, 6.4, the last section of this chapter, motion in the presence of resistive forces. And um, this is, uh, uh, we're gonna study two models. Uh, well, uh, here the resistance is when you're traveling through a medium, either a, a liquid or a gas, air is an example, or they, as they show the sharks, and water here. We're going to study two models, uh, the two simplified models. One is that we're going to assume that the resistive force is proportional to the velocity of the moving object. Uh, that's the first uh, assumption. The second assumption, we're going to assume that the resistive force is proportional to the square of the speed of the moving object. This is for when there's a high speed, such as the skydivers, um, moving through the air or a bullet or a baseball uh anything like that uh, that's moving rapidly uh will uh, experience a resistive force a drag force uh, so first let's let's look at the first model we have a little uh ball bearing or pearl or something uh it seems like there used to be a commercial where they would drop a pearl in some shampoo to show how thick it was you can imagine it uh, like that, some viscous fluid. Uh, so as as the uh, pearl drops, it, it, there's a gravitational force pulling it down, but there's also a resistive force pulling it up, and there's a velocity, a downward velocity. Um, so the resistance is equal to uh, minus b uh, times the velocity, and this minus b is just a a constant of proportionality. Um, I mean, uh, it, it's a it's a constant uh, that uh, uh, the resistive force goes up and the velocity goes up. It's directly proportional. Um, so we, we, the force in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, the sum of the forces. There's only two forces. There's the uh, uh, gravitational force downward and the resistive force upward well the gravitational force downward is mg and the resistive force upward is the this minus uh b times the velocity um and that equals the those sum of the forces uh equals the mass times acceleration uh so uh, the acceleration is dvdt so if we solve for the acceleration um, we see that we divide both sides by uh, m, and the mg divided by m just becomes g, and the bv divided by m becomes minus b over m times v. So dvdt, the acceleration, equals g uh, minus b over m uh, times v. So uh, that's the um, equation for the acceleration. Um, now, you can see that, that uh, from the graph here, uh, the velocity starts off at zero and the acceleration is uh, uh, g. Uh, so it, it goes, uh, it starts at zero and it starts increasing and becomes steady. And you can see that the acceleration uh, starts high and then slows down. So it's gonna reach a terminal velocity uh, the terminal velocity means that the downward uh, force is equal to the upward force. Um, the sum of the forces is equal to zero means no acceleration. Uh, so that's when it reaches its uh, terminal velocity. You can see the, from the graph, from the uh, velocity times time graph, the sphere approaches a maximum speed or a terminal speed, uh, V sub T. And the time constant tau is the time at which the sphere reaches a speed of 0.632 uh, VT. So when the speed reaches 63%, 63.2% of its terminal velocity, that's tau. Um, so uh, let's, let's uh, find tau here. In this case, you have, uh, let's set the, when we have terminal velocity, is when there's no acceleration. In other words, the downward force equals the resistive force, um, and the resistive force is is uh, um, 
the minus BV, uh, this is where we're solving for acceleration, but in this case, the acceleration is equal to zero. So it's equal to uh, G minus B over M times VT, the terminal velocity. Or if we solve for the terminal velocity, we'll see that uh, it's equal to MG divided by B. Um, so the, this is a uh, uh, differential equation, and we're not going to go through the derivation. The book doesn't go through the der derivation. We'll see this. Uh, we'll see this equation again. We'll see it when it comes to uh, uh, RC time uh, uh, capacitors, uh, the charging and discharging of a capacitor. We'll see the uh, one minus e to the minus t over tau. Uh, so the velocity is equal to mg over b, which is the terminal velocity, uh, times 1 minus, uh, minus bt over m. Well, the um, m over b is tau, is the time constant. So this, uh, the, the velocity uh, as a function of time is given by the equation um, vt, the terminal velocity, times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. And E is uh, called Euler's number, and it's uh, E equals 2.71828. It is the uh, base for the natural logarithm. Uh, and log is base 10. Natural logarithm is base E, which is 2.71828. Um, it's a parameter that appears often in physics. I think this is our first exposure to it here in in this first semester of physics. Um, so the uh, v the the uh, v at the terminal velocity is equal to v t times one minus uh, e uh, minus e over minus t minus tau over tau, which is one over e, uh, is equal to uh, v t times one minus one over e which is equal to 0.632 uh, 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 times the terminal velocity. Or, in other words, the V at tau is when it's 63.2% of the terminal velocity. Um, now let's look at uh, uh, resistive force proportional to the object speed of the speed squared. Uh, so here we have a, uh, uh, a ball traveling in air. Uh, as as the uh, uh, as it picks up some velocity, it's the downward force is mg. The upward force is the resistance. Now, when the resistance equals the downward force, the sum of the forces equals zero. And when you have the sum of the forces equals zero, then you have the acceleration equals zero. You know, sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Well, the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Then the acceleration is equal to zero. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not moving. It means that it's not accelerating. It means that the downward force is equal to the uh, downward gravitational force is equal to the resistive force, and you've reached terminal velocity. You are you have a speed. It's just the final speed you're going to reach. Uh, and the resistance, the resistive force, is an equation one half d rho a v squared, where d is the drag coefficient. Rho is the density of the medium. In this case, you can say it could be air or oil or, well, not oil because that's a slow speed. Uh, uh, we'll just say air in this case, the density of the air. A is the cross-sectional uh, area of the object falling. And V, of, co uh, of course, is the speed. So in that cross-sectional area, if you ever see these skydivers, uh, if they're, their spread eagle, spread eagle, where their arms and legs are spread out there uh, at a one terminal velocity, but then if they tuck their arms and their legs together and head downward, they've just minimized, they've just reduced their cross sectional area. When, in other words, when they're spread eagle, they're presenting one cross sectional area. When they tuck in their arms and their legs and they head downward, it's just, you know, their head and shoulders is the cross sectional area. So they've just reduced. Their area, and so the the resistance decreases. If they decrease their cross-sectional area, the resistance decreases, and they pick up speed, and they'll arrive at a new terminal velocity. 
Uh, so the resistance is equal to one half times the drag coefficient times the uh, uh, density of air times the cross-sectional area times V squared. So the sum of the forces, uh, what are the forces you have? You have the mg downward and um, r upward. So the sum of the forces is equal to mg uh, minus one half uh, d rho uh, a v squared. Now the acceleration force uh, uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. The acceleration uh, is you know is mass times acceleration. To get acceleration, we decide divide both sides by mass. Um, mg divided by m is g, and one half d rho a v squared divided by uh, m is d rho uh, area divided by 2m times v squared. Well, let's solve, um, uh, well, when the acceleration is equal to zero, uh, you have g, you have the, the, the sum of these forces equals zero, uh, acceleration is zero. And so let's solve for the terminal velocity. Uh, if you solve for vt, you, uh, subtract uh, g from both sides then you divide by a minus d rho a to m uh, but then you have to take the square root of it so you end up with the terminal velocity is equal to the square root of 2 mg divided by uh, the drag coefficient d times rho times the area uh, and these are some typical terminal speeds of different objects so a skydiver of mass uh, 75 kilograms, you can see that mass is uh, part of the equation there under the radical. So uh, a skydiver of 75 kilograms, whose cross-sectional area is 0.7 uh, square meters, his terminal velocity is, is uh, 60 meters per second. Um, a baseball, uh, radius 3.7 centimeters and uh, mass 0.145, it gives you a cross-sectional area there. Uh, the uh, terminal velocity is 43 meters per second. Uh, golf ball, 44 meters per second. Hailstone, 14 meters per second. And a raindrop is nine meters per second. Um, so those are some uh, terminal velocities. Uh, let's see. We have a basketball and a two-inch diameter uh, steel ball. They, they have the same uh, mass. And they're dropped through air from rest such that their bottoms are initially at the same height above the ground on the order of one meter or more. Which one strikes the ground first? Um, well, uh, they both have the same mass. Uh, they certainly have, uh, the, since they're both, uh, uh, they both have the same mass, but they have different cross-sectional areas. So the one with the smaller cross-sectional area should have the least resistance. So the steel ball should strike the ground first. Um, and I believe that's, uh, that's it for, the, uh, for that section. So that ends the chapter. Um,